Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com and this is Trading Places Live. It's Thursday, October 14th, 2021, and I'm pre-recording this Trading Places Live for just a little bit later this morning. Currently, futures are uh, very, very strong. Um, we've got uh, futures looking at maybe a couple hundred points on the Dow. Um, see if we get the latest there for you. Yeah, last I'm um, seeing 237 points on the Dow Jones to the upside. S&P 500 futures up 33 and a half. NASDAQ futures up 128. Uh, we do have um, uh, more earnings coming out today. We're going to be talking about all that. In fact, let's go ahead and pull up that agenda for today. I'm going to start off with the daily market recap. Uh, then we'll get into talking technically. Chart breakouts, earnings spotlight, and then we'll wrap up the show with the three you must see. Before we get into any of that, let me take you over to earningsbeats.com. For those of you who are new to Earnings Beats, uh, if you go to earningsbeats.com, you scroll down. First thing I just want to point out, you can subscribe to our free Earnings Beats Digest. All it uh, requires is your name, email address, hit that subscribe button. This is a newsletter I publish three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, usually dealing with things that are important to us at um, Earnings Beats. So we're going to look at things like uh, relative strength, earnings, especially earnings-related gaps, how they appear on the the charts, uh, do a lot of work with candlesticks. So a lot of times I'll talk about candlesticks, but it's a very brief newsletter, just a couple paragraphs, one chart, uh, just showing you something for that particular day. I think you'll enjoy it. Also, if you're part of our community at Earnings Beats, including our free Earnings Beats Digest community, um, we have free events from time to time, and we send out room instructions to our entire community for that. And the reason I bring this up, because this Saturday, we have a big one, Chart Fest 2021. Really looking forward to this one. I've got Grayson Rose, uh, Vice President of Operations at Stock Charts, and also David Keller, who's the Stock Charts uh, Chief Market Strategist and also the host of The Final Bar. They're both good friends of mine. They'll both be joining on Saturday. We're going to have a great time looking at routines that we go through, that we use to try to uh, help us in our trading, to identify great uh, trading opportunities. So I'm looking forward to uh, having a few hours with Grayson and David. And, uh, and I've got quite a few um, charts for you as well. And then we're going to have some giveaways, uh, chart lists that are really important to all of us, that uh, for those who attend, and again, it's a free event, uh, but all those who attend can get the uh, free giveaways. Um, it's going to start at 11 a.m. Eastern. You don't have to be there. If you can't make it, we'll send out a recording but you still need to sign up. So if you click on this link right here on our website, it'll take you to our landing page. Again, another area where you can um, uh, register by subscribing to our uh, newsletter. And then it goes through the lineup starting at 11 a.m. Eastern, gives you a few bullet points, what we're each gonna be talking about. And then there will be some uh, bonuses or gifts, if you will, uh, for those who are in attendance. So we'd love to have you uh, mark your calendar Saturday, uh, October 16th, um, Chart Fest 2021. All right, let's move on to the recap from Wednesday. Um, it was an interesting day, a little bit of a bifurcated day in the sense that we did have a fractional loss on the Dow Jones and on the small cap um, index, but the S&P 500 was up 13. The NASDAQ was up over 100 points yesterday, up almost three quarters of 1%. That downtrend remains in play on both of these indexes, though, and including the Dow as well. Um, I would say at this point, none of the major indices has shown us a breakout that is worth suggesting that we're starting a new uptrend. But I do believe we're about to. Um, maybe it's just a gut feeling. but. Uh, and I'll show you a couple of charts during uh, talking technically, things that would maybe begin to confirm it for me. Uh, moving on to the sectors, utilities were the best performer on Wednesday, rising more than 1%. Of course, they're coming out of some pretty beaten down area, um, been trending lower since the beginning of September. So need some work, need to get through that recent high through the 20 day. I'm gonna say a break and close above 66 there would be bullish. Materials also been downtrending here. I just think we're more in sideways consolidation. You can see this triple bottom down here just near 78. Recent highs, well, the double top up near 86. We're right in the middle right now near 82. 
we've got to break out of this range. So still some work to do with the materials technology, which had been uptrending for a while, currently in this downtrend. This is going to be one of the keys for the NASDAQ to break back up here and for the S&P 500, but especially the NASDAQ. So let's watch the uh, technology group. I will say software made a breakout yesterday. You want to watch software and it made a breakout on a relative basis. Um, real estate, you can see yesterday up a little bit more than half of 1%. Uh, it did close up just above its 20-day EMA, 45.54, 20 days, 45.46. So that was at least a little bit of a start. And then the worst performer was financials. But even the financials, I thought, looked pretty good because they were down a lot more intraday and came back up, closed at 38.29, which was nine cents above the 20-day, even though we were well beneath that uh, earlier in the session. So I like what financials did on that reversal yesterday. And I suspect that we'll probably go higher on financials from here. Watch that 20-day moving average. We want that to stay above the 50, and we want price action to start trending up above that. But right now, I would say financials, one of the strongest looking groups um, technically. And even though it was the worst performer yesterday, I think it didn't do itself any uh, injustice by coming back up and closing above the 20-day. So financials looking pretty good as we start Thursday. All right, moving on to the 10-year Treasury yield. We do have a few, a uh, couple economic reports out this morning of significance. Initial jobless claims out at 8.30, as they always are. 320,000 is what we're looking for in claims. Last week was 326,000, so we're looking for a little bit of a drop there. The September PPI out this morning. Yesterday, CPI came in, and it was fairly tame. Today, we're looking for PPI to come in less than we saw in August. Still elevated, though. So September PPI expected to come in at five-tenths of 1% rise. August, we saw a rise of seven-tenths of 1%. So it's heading in the right direction, but still too high. The core PPI, which is what I would pay more attention to, also is expected to decline from August, but still elevated as well. So August rose six-tenths of 1%. For September, we're expecting a five-tenths or one-half percent rise. So... Uh, PPI coming out on the heels of the CPI, if we get both out a little bit less than expected or right, you know, fairly tame, no big surprises to the upside, that would certainly help many of the growth stocks and the NASDAQ names um, that we're going to need to really get this uh, market moving again back to the upside. 10-year Treasury yield, though, here you can see we're definitely trending higher. Last couple of days, of course, we had closed on Monday. Tuesday and Wednesday, we were both down, though, just a little we came off the lows yesterday. I think that helped to trigger a little bit of a rally in the financials at the end of the day. But financials, you can see on a relative basis, as we pulled back in the yield, on a relative basis, financials have under, underperformed. And yesterday, even though they rallied, they were the worst performing sector. So when the yields are going down, you have to be careful with, with financials. Yields going up, that's when we generally have pretty good action in the financial group. All right, I'm um, going to move on to talking technically. I mentioned a couple of things to look for for confirmation. Um, I'll tell you, one of the things that's going to be big for me, I think, is I always like to see the NASDAQ outperforming. The NASDAQ is comprised of more tech names on a percentage basis, more growth-oriented names. And so I would like to see that area of the market leading. And you can see since we topped here, actually it was maybe in the second week of September, growth stocks, or excuse me, well, NASDAQ versus the S&P 500 has taken a pretty big hit. We went down, actually had a slight breakdown there. I'm going to annotate this for you. This is a chart I showed our members yesterday in, the, um, in our daily market report that I write every day. But here are some key relative lows on the NASDAQ versus the S&P 500. So mid-August, we had this low. And then early October, we went down and just barely breached it to the downside, started to rally, came back down, tested this area again from mid-August, and now starting to turn back up again. What I would watch is to see whether or not we can get this breakout here. I mean, technically, lower lows, lower high, lower low, you want to get back through that high. But this would be a really good start because it's almost a double bottom here with this um, high in between. And so when I normally when I see this kind of pattern develop, when we get through that high, that's a pretty good sign that you're reversing the trend. So this is the first level to look for. This would be the second. 
but we want to see this start to move back to the upside. So that's one chart that I would look for. The other one that I would be looking at or, or uh, hoping that we can get some positive action would be a somewhat similar chart. This is the Dow Jones Small Cap Growth Index versus the Dow Jones US Value Index. Growth versus value stocks. I'm going to pull it up on the exact same chart. Here you can see we did go down a little bit further than what we saw the lows in August, um, but still pretty much the same setup. A huge drop recently out of growth stocks. Um, we're starting to see a little bit of maybe at least a base forming. So when we look again for possible confirmation, I'd be looking at this maybe as more of like a double bottom right here on the 4th and then again on the 11th. And then here is that reaction high off the first low. So double bottom, got to get back through this low. Um, so it's set up very similar to the NASDAQ versus the S&P 500. If we can get both of those breakouts and we start seeing money rotating back into growth, and you can see on this hourly chart, the relative PPO has just moved back up above zero. So we've seen enough of consolidation to bring that negative momentum back near the zero line. And if we can get a breakout now to confirm that slight breakout on the relative PPO, uh, I think this would be um, really good relative price action. So watch these two lines on uh, this ratio and then also the NASDAQ versus the S&P. All right. Um, let me just pull up the S&P 500 itself. Um, but I'm going to show it to you here on this hourly three-month chart. I mean, we still got this pattern of lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, and now we're still moving down. So we are not out of the woods. I don't want to paint that picture. And that's why I said it was more of a gut feeling to me that we're going to get, get rolling here. Um, you know, we've, we've been consolidating for a while. If we look at the daily chart um, on the S&P 500, I think what you'll see is we've had this kind of A, B, C correction, and now we're back up near the 20. I'm looking to put in a higher low and then a breakout. Um, I think it might be on, well, it's probably on both of these. Yeah, both of these really. What I, what I think could happen here, and this is another thing that I put in our daily market report yesterday, um, but let me pull up this chart with a little bit more room over here and let's annotate it. Because I think what we could, anytime we're in a, a secular bull market, long-term secular bull market, which means higher prices, gonna keep going higher. I look for these short-term pullbacks as an opportunity to try to identify a bullish continuation pattern. And so what we have here, potentially, not yet, and it may not develop, but I, again, I try to look for them. What we could have developing is an inverse head and shoulder. So what we would have is a left shoulder, which is already potentially formed right here. You bounce, and then at that point, that establishes the left side of a neckline. Right there. You go down to a lower low after establishing the left side of the neckline, which could be the inverse head. So you got that right there. Now what I'm looking for potentially is a move from here, essentially back up to here to test this neckline. So today we got futures up. So this could be perhaps another piece of this puzzle to move back up. If we do get back through the moving averages, the next thing I would look for is this reaction high, which is also gap resistance. And I'll give you that number in just a minute where that resides. But first, um, what I would expect is maybe something like this to come back down and maybe put in this right shoulder to be somewhat close to the left shoulder. It doesn't have to go all the way back down there, but somewhere close. And then from here, maybe get a breakout. Or maybe it's a little bit, you know, maybe it's something like that. But this would kind of play into the history of the market um, as well, because first of all, the 21st to the 27th is a period of bearishness historically in 
October. It's the worst week of the year coming up. So maybe what we see is something that goes out something more like that. And then we take off. But this time of the year, once we get to November, or excuse me, October 27th on the close, we enter the strongest period of the year historically dating back to 1950. So the NASDAQ, uh, or I should say the S&P 500, I believe has gone up 60 of the last 71 years from the October 27th close to the January 18th close. So only 11 times in the last 70 years, 71 years, 11 times in the last 71 years have we seen the S&P 500 finish January, January 18th lower than where it began the period on October 27th close. That's a pretty strong history of higher prices. So the fourth quarter of the year tends to be strong. And I believe that companies, the reason I think September tends to be weak, I think companies, if they're not going to be able to meet their numbers, basically they're telling Wall Street, they're saying, listen, okay, you know, back in the first quarter, we thought the second quarter would be stronger. At the second quarter, we thought the second half of the year would be stronger. By the time you get to September, you're running out of time to make that a good year. So I think a lot of times the dirty laundry comes out in September. And then all of the optimism comes back into the market in October as we go into earnings season and through, uh, especially November. November tends to be a very good period. So anyway, this, this is just another um, chart maybe to, to kind of keep in mind a potential pattern that may form. Um, so it's something I'm definitely looking at. And the same thing could be used on the S&P 500 as well. I just chose to show it on the NASDAQ. All right. Let's move on to chart breakouts. So I'm going to go through a bunch of charts, but I'm going to give you um, at the end six that really stand out to me. So these are all breakouts. Um, and essentially what I did is I got them from the predefined 52-week high list on stock charts. So this is nothing um, that I did personally to try to come up with a, a great list. This is just going off the 52-week high list looking at the charts and then just pointing some of these out. So Global X Uranium ETF. What I liked about this one was just the breakout and potential cup here. So we had this move up cup. We did set a new 52 week high yesterday, but maybe we pull back into a handle. That AD line looks pretty strong. TTM, this is Tata Motors. Look at the AD line and look at the action going up. Look at the volume coming in now. I don't like jumping into something like this just because it's so stretched. It's so, um, you know, violently overbought that if you get in here, there's nothing saying it can't keep going, but it could be, you know, anybody that bought in along this way, if it starts dropping, they're going to start to panic. And so that's why sometimes you see these stocks go straight up and then they come straight back down. It's just too much risk for me. It's not that I don't think the stock could go up higher. It's definitely in an uptrend. There's a ton of traders supporting it but you got to be willing to take on extraordinary risk. You could buy it at 34 and you get a 20 day test the next day or two. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I have seen it happen. And if I buy at 34, last thing I want to do is see the stock at 26 next two days. Then what do you do if it breaks below the 20 day? You know, all of a sudden you got this massive loss on your hands. So the riskier the stock is, the smaller the position size, by the way, as well. If I did decide I was going to buy a stock in a, a crazy uptrend like this. It would be on a, with a much smaller position than I normally would trade. <clears throat> Cloudflare. This is one we've talked about. This is in one of our portfolios. I mean, this stock is just on a mission right now. Nine straight days closing above its open. That's what these hollow candles represent. AD line, absolutely soaring. Volume has come in. Relative strength. Look at the relative strength of Cloudflare versus software. This is one of your leaders in software and software just breaking out, by the way. Here's that breakout I talked about earlier. On a relative basis, there's software breaking out on a relative basis. Um, not quite on an absolute basis, though, by the way. So we haven't broken out on an absolute basis, just on a relative basis, which I find in many cases to be even better. If the market's been pulling back, and I know software is getting its more than its fair share of money. When the stock market recovers, that's where I continue to see or expect money to flow to. So I would be looking for some software stocks. And Netflix certainly is one of the, the bright spots right now. 
IGT, this is international game technology. You know, when you consider this is in the gambling space, which is eight months removed from its 52 week high back in March, um, pretty interesting to see the AD line breaking out the new highs and the stock also breaking out the new highs. Solid volume. This is one of your leaders in the gambling area. You can see right here. So not a huge fan of gambling stocks, but I do think discretionary stocks are going to pick up. This one has does seem to have double bottomed right there on a relative basis. A breakout above the 0.20 level would be a good sign. And then you've got IGT, which is one of your relative leaders. All right, I'm going to give you the six uh, now that I thought were maybe a little bit more worthy. Um, I, what I like are when stocks base for a long period of time and then make a breakout and the volume picks up. This one, 80 lines up near high. I don't know. This one, it just looks like a really good stock to me. It's in a very strong space, real estate services. Uh, this area relative to the S&P 500 has been strong. So I like that breakout there. Baker Hughes. Those of you who listen to me for a long time know I haven't been a big energy fan for many, many, many years. Um, you can catch them when they get hot, which they're hot right now. But when they cool back off, I would be long gone. Uh, but I do like Baker Hughes coming up. Volume has been pretty strong of late, and it is breaking out. It did break out yesterday to a new closing 52-week high. Zuo, this is Zuora, which is another software stock. Look at the sideways consolidation here. The breakout, the volume increase, and the AD line making new highs. I think this is a stock that could run. Uh, CyberArk, CYBR, another software stock. Look at the sideways consolidation. Look at that breakout and the volume increasing. And the AD lines strengthening. Another one looks good. How about PNFP? This is a bank that just reported earnings. Came out with its earnings and broke out. AD line strong. It's got... Uh, maybe a little bit of work. No, actually it did make a relative breakout. I didn't think it had made its relative breakout, but it did. So it's got a relative breakout, absolute breakout, high volume increase and AD line breaking out. So this is a nice chart in the banking area if you're interested. LKQ, this will be the last one I show you as far as the chart breakouts. But again, you can see the theme, you know, as opposed to that one stock was it Tata Motors that was just going straight up every day. And I said, there was a lot of risk. These types of stocks, when you get a big, long base established, when you finally get that breakout, number one, because you've got a lot of base there, you should have good support, and you don't have to wait $8 down to your 20-day moving average for support. So that's why I prefer these stocks. I think they present less risk, and many times when you base and you break out, you can be launching into a longer-term uptrend. So those are your chart breakouts for today. Let's move on to earnings spotlight. I can tell you uh, because it is still a little early, I haven't been able to see all the earnings, but I thought what we do is look at the reaction. Um, we've got almost an hour and a half uh, left to the opening bell. Um, by the time you hear this, it'll be almost the opening bell. But I wanted to just go through and just see where these, what these stocks are doing. These are all companies that have reported or will be reporting this morning. So I'm gonna start with Taiwan Semiconductor and I just wanna get their reaction this morning. We're getting a positive reaction to Taiwan Semiconductor, which, by the way, has been a poor performing semiconductor. That could be a good sign for the entire group. We got UNH, United Health, up 3%. Another one that had double bottom, but moving back up to 415, breaking above recent highs. Still got some work to do, but hey, I'd rather be up 3% than down 3%. Bank of America, I did see that they beat their earnings estimate up 3%. This is one of my favorite banks going into earnings. I thought Bank of America was setting up really nicely. I expected good numbers. It sounds like they had some good numbers and the stock up not too far from a 52-week high in pre-market. Wells Fargo. Now, Wells Fargo, remember, has been having some problems with potential regulators. This was one, probably my favorite bank up until about two or three months ago when this news came out and the stock sold off. But I thought it was an overreaction. We're still in an uptrend, I believe. And we did get a positive reaction from earnings. So I'm still holding out hope here, here on uh, Wells Fargo that we'll soon break back out again. <clears throat> Morgan Stanley, I saw, also had good earnings, beating expectations, stock up 1.8%. Um, let's see, what else we have? Citigroup reporting. This was one that I didn't particularly care for the way it had been trading. Um, the stock is up 1.5% pre-market. I did not see their earnings, so I'm not sure there. 
USB, another bank, US Bank Corp, up 1% this morning. They are going to be reporting. You see, they've had a much bigger move into earnings. Uh, so I would think their numbers would be pretty good. WBA, this is Walgreens. I did see that they beat this morning. Stock up 1.5%. And then Domino's Pizza, uh, actually getting hit to the downside today. Okay, this one has got me, I'm kind of surprised by this one. It is now gapping down potentially below this gap support level. This is actually a stock that I featured uh, as one of my five stocks on the pitch recently um, because I was a fan of the consumer discretionary area. I thought dominoes with this pullback down into this gap support area, we could see a bounce. Unless we get a big reaction back to the upside after an opening gap down, uh, I'm not so sure. And I'd be a little bit concerned if they missed their earnings or revenue estimates. Um, or even potentially lower guidance. So I don't know the numbers on DPZ, but I tell you, I don't like the reaction here. I don't like the fact that it is going below these, these lows. If it comes back up and could buy the uh, open and can open around 470 or so, then I would give it a lot more of a chance for a rebound, 460, uh, not so much. All right, let's move on to the three you must see. And uh, these are all three. If you look at... Um, your dashboard, what you're going to find on the market movers. <clears throat> what I did is I looked at the top up for large cap, top up for mid cap, top up for small cap. <clears throat> and I just randomly took the one that moved the most yesterday. And we're going to pull up the chart. Now I can tell you without even looking at JSPR, the fact that it jumped up 88 points on the scooter from nine uh, to 97, that tells me the stock was really doing horribly, maybe has some kind of an announcement just gapped up hugely. I don't know. I haven't even looked at the chart, but that's kind of what that tells me. But let's look at these charts and uh, just see what we come up with here. So first, SAP, um, well, it's been trending higher since that low all the way back in uh, October of last year, but we've started rolling back over again. We did come up over the 20 day yesterday, so I'm gonna give it a little bit of hope there. Um, but this is one that has been downtrending versus software. So I talked about some stocks setting 52-week highs that looked really good to me in the software space. Um, you know, certainly Cloudflare uh, among those breakouts, Net, um, Zorro, ZUO, um, what was the other one, uh, RLGY. I mean, these are all stocks that I think look better than SAP, but we'll see what... Uh, what transpires, whether we can get back through. I would be looking more at sideways consolidation. So perhaps overhead resistance just above 150. Downside, you got gap support around 134, and we'll see which way it goes if it can break out of that range. The next one, the mid cap top scooter mover is Vista, Vistra Energy Corp. And this actually made a big breakout above this triple top right here, 19 and a half. Volume was big. I wouldn't be surprised to see this one continue to move higher. I would use yesterday's low as a stop. If it does go back down below yesterday's lows, I'd probably just get back out if I was in it. Um, but otherwise, I'd be looking maybe to fill this gap up here, which is up over $22. So very possible you get another 10, 12% out of this one. And then the last one I have for you is JSPR. Let's see what that thing looks like. Oh, it's a stock that's just been downtrending, but I don't even know what craziness has been happening. But yeah, we did get the big move up yesterday from a 52-week low to setting a 52-week high. Uh, I am not a fan of stocks like this. We've got a false breakout above that prior high. I would think it would probably pull back, but who knows? Uh, this is just a wild stock. It's going to gap probably significantly one way or the other. We'll see. Uh, not a stock that I would trade. All right, that's it for me. I appreciate you tuning in. <clears throat> this is my last show of the week. Um, have a great rest of your Thursday and Friday. Enjoy your weekend. I will be back on Monday over at earningsbeats.com, but please Sign up for ChartFest 2021. For more information, go over to earningsbeats.com. Have a great weekend. Happy trading, everybody. Hey, guys. Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.